Well, greetings. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we are so glad that you could join us tonight at Heart Matters. I am your host, Dr. Marshall, and we have a great man of God here tonight with us as our guest. We're going to be talking about uh, ministry, and we're going to be talking about a book that he wrote, and it's called The Revelance of the Cross Trilogy, and we're going to allow him to explain to us about how he got in ministry and what led him to become an author. You often hear me say God has a plan and a purpose for your life and it is not just to do everything it, everyday things it is to leave a legacy in the earth and by us becoming authors or whatever it is any type of media whatever we do we are allowing other people to read what God revealed to us or to see or to hear what God revealed to us in our lifetime so help me to welcome Reverend A.M. Landry amen Andrew Landry help me welcome him praise God he is the pastor of Oak Hill Missionary Baptist Church here in Houston, Texas, and we're so very glad to have you, man of God. Thank you Thank very you much. for coming, praise God. I met you by way of telephone yes. from a friend of mine in Cincinnati. See how God hooks all that up? Yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. About, from a friend in Cincinnati. That's the one thing I love about God's kingdom. We're smaller than we think. We connect on at so many ways. I was at a military uh, funeral this morning, and I tell you, that, that group got smaller and smaller and smaller because I remember hearing this one, seeing that one, and you know, those kind of things, and they had heard about me and all that kind of stuff, and I tell you, you just never know who you're going to run into, so we didn't know each other. No, well, I, I, I never knew anybody on my show before. <laughs> so <laughs> It's all good. That's how you know it's God. He directs uh, steps yes, of a good man or order by the Lord. Amen. Right. Amen. So as we look at this, um, I want to just ask you a couple questions. Are you a Houstonian? Uh, I was born in Pasadena, Texas. Okay. But I was actually raised in Raywood, Texas. In Raywood, che Texas. Yes, All right. All right. And you're married to that beautiful lady over there, yeah, right? That's correct. Uh, how many children do you have? Uh, we've got biologically five altogether. Five children. Mm -hmm. All right. That is awesome. That, that's good. Back in that day, it wasn't too bad. Now five, they about, y'all in your hand, but two, I know, I know. But anyway, <laughs> 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 one boy and one girl's the whole, right? <laughs> uh, they don't do it like they used to, right? <laughs> Amen. Man. And let me ask you, how long have you been pastoring? Uh, 11, I just celebrated my 11th year. Congratulations. Uh, this past month. Congratulations. Yes, Happy anniversary. Amen. Yes, what led you to Christ? What, what, let me go back up a little bit. Okay. What was you like before you came to Christ? All right. Do you have any friends named UFO? <laughs> you don't get that name, you earned it. Well, that's where I am. You're looking at UFO. And uh, if there's anybody that's a candidate for unworthiness, you look at me. Uh -huh. I'm ex-Army and I'm ex-Navy. Uh -huh. And if all the wildness of anything you can imagine, if mm -hmm. God can clean anything up, he cleaned me up. Mm -hmm. So the potential is no matter what nobody else is going through, if he can clean me up, that's helping anybody else. Okay. My idea of a good time was I buy a pound of weed, thrill, uh, sell three bags and smoke the rest. I was worried about a shortage. Ooh, we must have been on the same street. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> At but, least the same neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing I found out, my past is what I need to stand on because God cleaned me from that, yes. and it helps the people that I deal with. I'm a volunteer, also a volunteer chaplain for the TDC, as well as I spent 15 years as a volunteer teacher at the Open Door Mission. So if there's anybody that can tell you anything bad, I was qualified to talk to them on that level where they're at. I wasn't in the church all the time. Mm -hmm. I came from the outside in. My yes. brother was the one that was consistent in the church. Amen. I was the one on the other side. Amen, amen. Yes, he just wrote my bio, y'all. <laughs> well, God bless you. And what was the main encounter? You, uh, what happened? What event took place that made you just say, okay, this is enough of this. I need to come to the other side. I really need to know Jesus. I blew my knee out when I was in the, in the Navy. And I was a pretty decent basketball player. And when I blew my knee out, they were in, I was down in Kingsville, Texas as an air traffic controller. And then uh, they sent me to San Antonio, Texas, Fort Sam. And when they did surgery, I had a reconstruction done on my knee. And everything, I got carbon fiber reconstruction. I'm actually a government guinea pig. And so uh, everything was working well until they had a fight on the ward. And they fell on my knee and they broke it. And then I had extended stay at uh, Fort Sam Houston in the hospital. And the second surgery, just like you and I sitting here talking, the Lord said, I didn't make you for you. I made you for me. Mm. And that was back in the 80s. And then uh, late on around 92, after I got out of the military, uh, I was sitting there and I remember 
had a couple of friends on their way to go praise God and open up for the Williams Brothers in Beaumont. And I was sitting there at the house, uh, barbecue pit going, had a cigarette in one hand just in case my daddy came up on me, had a joint in the other hand. <laughs> I was smoking uh, some cognac, drinking cognac Ooh, and smoking weed. that was my weed. drink too. I'm telling you, I was the same neighborhood. But, but one thing was I had a problem. I would always get high, then I would read the Bible. And when I read the 12th chapter of Revelation, and what happened was I got to that point when they said that was war in heaven. Nobody ever, ever, ever told me that. And I looked at that, and the next thing it said, there was a, a dragon with seven heads and ten horns. And I closed the book up. And as my friends were on their way to Beaumont to open up for the Williams brothers, I'd say, one day, uh, you and I are going to praise the Lord. And they thought that was the funniest thing that's going on. They're still laughing about that today. Uh, but here it is in 2018, and I'm standing for God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So have you been a pastor of the same church for the whole time? Yes, ma'am. For the 11 years? Yes, ma'am. you said you 11 years. Yes, ma'am. All right. What is ministry like? For ministry uh, for me is I've learned it's a challenge. It's two things. I find there's three different types of people you deal with. You get one group that's sold out for Christ. You got the others that's middle of the roaders that give everybody a bad name. Uh, they go to church, but yet still they're playing a lot of in and out. They put more, uh, doing more things than they are, kind of like a one foot on wet bar of soap and the other one on wet banana peel. And then you got the ones that's out there that really just don't know the Lord. Oh, no. Now, for me, I've learned my best is to reach the ones that in that last class mm -hmm. that don't know the Lord. Those are the ones that uh, Jesus said the harvest is plentiful, but, but the labors, labors are few. few. And so my job Amen. is and goal is to personally evangelize one million souls personally because of what he's done for me. So for me, it's, it's a, now's a better time as ever to be in ministry because if there ever was a time there's a need for somebody to know about the Lord, that time is now. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Tell me, what do you figure, uh, what are your greatest struggles in ministry? My greatest struggles in ministry is me. <laughs> Bottom line here is I've learned it's God's plan, mm -hmm. God's time, and I got to have patience and wait, let God do what he want to do. It is man innate nature to just want to be in control, isn't yes, it? Yes, ma'am, it's the yeah. Burger King in us. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I want it my way, yes, right? Amen. But he does have a time and for everything. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. What's your greatest joy of ministry? Uh, when uh, I'm able to pray for someone and all of a sudden you see in the eyes that they really get it. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is it's real. As I told you, uh, I volunteer chaplain as TDC as well as uh, Open Door Mission. And over those years, I got a chance to see a lot of people that were mean and mad. And as an air traffic controller, I've learned to go book, chapter, and verse. Case in point is, in the, as an air traffic controller, if there was an incident or an accident, the situation would go like this. What did you say? They would open the books at the 711065 and they'd say, well, the book said this, and then they played a tape recorder. Mm -hmm. If I was found negligent, I had an involuntary manslaughter charges waiting on me at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. My brother was an officer there, and it looked real bad on him coming giving his older brother some cigarettes. <laughs> so I got to that point and realized that if man put that much emphasis on a life, what about the Lord? Mm -hmm. And then the Lord, when he called me, and I accepted my calling, mm -hmm. he gave me Ezekiel, the third chapter, starting at verse 17, said, Son of man, I made you a watchman. Warn the sinner that he's going to die. But if you don't want him, his blood's on your hand. On your hand. That's and right. at that point in time, that's I was right. like, wait a minute, God, that's not right. <laughs> and then I kept on reading and say, but if you want him, he's going to die anyway. Mm -hmm. But his soul, I, you have saved your soul. Mm -hmm. and at that point in time, soul, it gave right. me a revelation to understand. I give him book, chapter, and verse. At, at uh, Open Door Mission, they called me 5-0. Mm -hmm. No matter what they come with, I said, well, let's see what the Bible says. Yes. The book, chapter, and verse. Yes. And because I found out I don't have to argue with him because no. everybody's got an opinion. Absolutely. And everybody's entitled to their opinion. Yeah. But one thing I know for sure, God saved me, and it's the word of God that I stand on. Yes. And it makes no difference what nobody else do. I'm going to tell you if you get it, if you get it. If you don't, that's fine. But you still won't tell it. But hey. the most important thing <laughs> is when you stand before Jesus, yeah. he's going to ask you, what did I tell you? Yeah. And I want you to throw me under the gospel bus. I gave you book, <laughs> chapter, and verse. Amen. 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 Do me a favor. Look in that camera, at, uh, Reverend Landry, and tell him what the name of your church is and where you're located and what time you have church services. It's Oak Hill Missionary Baptist Church. We're located at 435 Orange Street, Houston, Texas. Sunday school starts at 9 a.m., 10.30. Uh, it's regular service, and everybody is welcome. 
Amen. 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 You are not just a pastor. You are author. I, I do. I, I volunteer at TDC too. <laughs> See, I just tell you, we just right there. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, um, at any rate, you are not just a pastor. You are an author. Yes, ma'am. All right. And how many books have you written? This is the first. This is your first, but mm -hmm. that won't be your last. I hear the Spirit no, of the Lord saying, Amen. No, Amen. And this book is called Incomprehensible Swordsman. Is that correct? The no, ma'am. It's, uh, it's the Revelance of the Cross, the cross trilogy, trilogy. But the incomparable swordsman is Jesus Christ. Okay. Because when you look at the scriptures, Hebrews 4 and 12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and it's sharper powerful. than any two-edged sword, dividing the asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and marrow, mm -hmm. and as a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Hebrews 4 and 12. He says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, yes. which is the word of God. Ephesians 6 and 17. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me, John 12 and 32. So that's what the word is. The word is incomparable. Jesus is incomparable. And once you understand it, even in the Greek, it says, in okay in the Logos proton theon. And that's yeah. John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. And so when you really understand the greatest love story there ever was and mm. ever will ever be told is this Bible that God sent his son to die for humanity like you and I. Unworthiness qualifies us as candidates for salvation. Amen. Amen. What made you write this book? What made me write this book was I was reading and studying and God gave me a vision because on Resurrection Sunday, everybody hears about the women going to the well, looking for Jesus. They can't find Jesus. When God, Peter and the other disciple can't find Jesus. And all of a sudden now, one may, depending on what gospel writer that you read, it said something. And then the next Sunday we hear about Peter going fishing. The question is, what happened on Resurrection Sunday? <laughs> so as I was studying, it showed me the road to Emmaus. Mm -hmm. On that road to Emmaus, there are seven point five miles away from Jerusalem and we find out two of his disciples are on their way going to Emmaus mm -hmm. and along the way come Jesus and what happened was what hit me with such clarity was the last time they saw Jesus he looked like hamburger on a stick because when you see the passion of Christ they had to water it down on TV because the reality of how they beat him and he was so magnificently tortured the way he was so that was the last picture in their mind's eyes so Cleophas and the other disciples was walking to Emmaus and they was talking about how bad things is it looked sad and it was a bad situation and up come walking Jesus two gospel writers talks about that one is Mark he says he came and along with two of the writers I mean the uh, disciples in an unknown form what form is that I can't tell you but Mark said it was unknown Luke gives more detail because he was talking to the great Theopolis. And we, Theopolis wanted to know, he was a Gentile official, wanted to know, why are you believing what you believe? He said, I'm an eyewitness. I know what's going on. And when he wrote about these two going, and they were talking about how they was up and down and looking bad and sad, despondent, and all of a sudden, here comes Jesus. Jesus said, uh, what's going on? What's the problem? And Cleophas turned around and said, you must be a stranger. You must not be around here. You must be new. You don't haven't heard all the different things. Jesus said, what you talking about? And as they continued to walk, and he came back, and he, he kept expounding on things, and Jesus looked at him, and he just didn't say anything. And he walked with him as if he was getting ready to leave. And then he said, well, we want you to stay with us a little while. And then he stopped, and he'd break bread with him. And at that point in time, then, he started sharing with him. And he opened up, he said, oh, fools of heart. He said, don't you know the scriptures talk about me? What a clarity that is. And the two disciples says, didn't our hearts burn within when he made us realize? And the scriptures come alive. And the scripture talks about Jesus. And that is God's mindset, a basic instruction for leaving earth, to be able to see exactly. If Jesus, the master teacher, who is the word, mm -hmm. John 1 and 14 said, the word became flesh and walked among us. At that point in time, who know better about the story than the person is talked about? So what greater thing that there is, is to validate that the Bible is what God said it is, his word on paper. Amen, 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 amen. His word on paper. Yes, amen, amen. You know, um, for the person that is not churched, mm -hmm. the person who has no idea mm -hmm. some of the lingo that's in in the in mm -hmm. here, right? What would you tell them why they need this particular book? Um, 
Uh, I'm, I'm particularly reminded of something I saw on here about the leopard cl being cleansed because mm -hmm. many of us can relate to that, mm -hmm. right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and I want you to kind of slow it down a little bit and just talk to them, tell them why why would they need to, uh, what would this book say to their, okay. their situation? I'm glad okay. you asked that. Mm -hmm. uh, this book will help everybody. There's a need to every family that walks it because it, in, in the world because everybody knows somebody that don't know the Lord. Everybody knows somebody that's been burnt by religion or tradition, mm -hmm. that's some backbiting, that's whatever reason it is that walked away from the Lord. Mm -hmm. So what this will do for you is, if you actually look, the greatest thing is, since I self-published, mine's a little different. If you look on page 25, it's questions for examining. Over the years, from being in the chaplaincy as well as a volunteer teacher, I've ran into so many different people that had questions about the validity of the word. Is it true? All the different things there are. Are there any commands that are given? Uh, can, can I accept what the scriptures say? Does, does the author include himself? How, how am I encouraged to strengthen? How did it happen? All these different questions, is there? Is there certain pronouns that are often used? Slow down, slow down for just a minute. Yes, uh, ma'am. I like that because often people have all these questions in their hearts, but they really don't ask anybody. Right. They rather debate it rather than investigate it. Yes, ma'am. And so at this point, this gives them all the uh, questions, the average questions that people would ask about it. And, and I like this in here because many times before we come to Christ, we debate the scriptures mm -hmm. we find excuse for not following the Absolutely. scriptures or coming to Christ amen mm -hmm. we find that our mom or dad didn't really practice the Christianity yes. in our eyes like they said they they should like we think they should mm -hmm. amen because the old church kind of took a lot of stuff home yes. you know what I'm saying yes, yeah and so there was a conflict in the way you say we should behave and then the way yes. we are behaving mm -hmm. amen and then it's it, many people feel weakened mm -hmm. they feel torn down it says, how am I encouraged and strengthened? Mm -hmm. and, and you answer that in this book. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I'm, I'm, re I'm reminded of when I first, uh, before I got saved, before I got saved, living in Big Sin. Mm -hmm. Well, back then they called it Big Sin, but all sin's the same. Right. It's all the same. Amen. But uh, shacking up. Amen. Uh -huh. And uh, my sister came to me and she said to me that she explained to me it was wrong. She explained to me why it was wrong. Amen. Uh -huh. she, she explained to me why it was wrong. Mm -hmm. And she ticked me off why she was explaining it. Right. Praise be to God. Right. Well, this I like this book because you don't have to be a person. <laughs> Amen. And, and do what I did to my sister because I mean, she's my older sister, so I didn't disrespect her. But in my heart, I was like, I'd be glad when she leaves yes. and her vacation is over. Right. All right. right, she's heard it, so I don't mind telling it. You know, I'd be glad when your vacation is over. But it made me think about it afterwards mm -hmm. as the Holy Spirit began to convict um, you to convict me. Mm -hmm. Naturally so, I wouldn't go back to my sister cause of pride, mm -hmm. amen, and ask her, well, what did you mean by this? Mm -hmm. And what does this mean or that mean, mm -hmm. amen? Mm -hmm. I, I fortunately had had enough background in, as a child in the church that knew if I wanted to go find an answer, I could go to the church. Exactly. And that's what I did. She left on a Friday, I went to church on Sunday, all, all right? right. Uh -huh. And so, uh, you know, it provoked me to go find out mm -hmm. more information. But I love this because not only can we re re it, to take the time mm -hmm. to see what my questions are, what valid questions I have, mm -hmm. amen. But then I can flip back here yes. and I can find out that information mm -hmm. and I can reread it and pray and ask God to reveal himself to me mm -hmm. as I read my Bible in conjunction. And most of these are scriptures are already listed. That's correct. And, and I like it, the fact that it's easy print, it's easy read, praise be to God. Mm -hmm. Jesus speaking is in red. Yes. So we know the difference between what the writer said and what Christ was saying, amen. I like that. I like the fact that it deals exactly with humanity, mm -hmm. amen. It deals with who the things we operate out of, praise be to God. And so this is a well-written book. And um, could you give us the name of this book again? Can you give the us? the Reverence of the Cross Trilogy. Uh-huh. And where can they find it at? They can get it from uh, on Smashwords. That come. Can you zoom in on that? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes. He he will zoom. He can zoom in on that. Yeah. And get that name. Okay. That um. That website. Actually. Yes, ma'am. It's a website. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it's www. Smash m s m a s h words. Com forward slash 
books forward slash view forward slash eight zero zero two five two put that up there again and we can ask you know, the producer to just zoom in on that because we want everybody who has any questions about the word of god even if you're saved and you have difficulty being able to explain the word of god we don't all same we're not all pastors mm -hmm. amen we're not all theologians amen mm -hmm. and even if we went to school some of us might have missed some areas or just didn't have the same revelation That's that correct. others had in our studies amen and this book helps you to do what? Explain that or it empowers somebody to mm -hmm. do it. To do it. Get it and read it yourself. Get it and share it with somebody. They make good gifts for people. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things I find we don't read anymore because we're screen babies. We're a screen generation. I call, it is the new name for it. It's called hair with, uh, not, it's, um, it's called digital a uh, digital heroin heroin, okay. and we're addicted to everything that comes to a screen. And they right. actually have detox places. Am I right about mm -hmm. it? Detox places for you to go to come off of the screen and again pick up a book. Hello, mm -hmm. talk to somebody right. face to face. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Amen. When I learned about that, I was like, Are we kidding? Because I like my phone, but I don't like it like that, mm -hmm. you know. And and we need to practice getting back to some of the basics mm -hmm. and being able to read a book and being able to go over it until we understand it, mark it up. Go ahead, Pastor. Uh, what please. I want to let you know is what I did, I did something because I self-published. I didn't go with the traditional way. Mm -hmm. What I've done was give it out on an e-book. Mm -hmm. This e-book is out in 51 countries as we speak. Amen. So what it does, it gives the capability of a broader base. Mm -hmm. I'm able to go and I pull up the ISBN number, and it's amazing to see the different strange languages. My picture of the book is coming up. Mm -hmm. But what that does, it gives me the capability of reaching more than just in the local area. Absolutely. So the ebook is with the technology where everybody's going with the iPhone, the young folks in that direction. So that's one of the main things is to be able to reach that young generation because that's our future. And yeah. to be able, as you said a few minutes yeah. ago, they can take it, and that's why I said every home needs this book. Every person that has a home, that has a phone, needs this book because you got a backwards child, a husband is acting up, a wife acting up, trouble trials, whatever Something it is. And so what's happening is on the individual, it's a personal relationship. The biggest thing I want them to do is to learn to have a personal relationship with Jesus. And when you yeah. do that, you can ask this question without nobody else knowing mm -hmm. because at that point in time, Jesus is going to convict you. So when you go and look at these different questions and no matter what comes your way, you'll set back and in time, God's going to reveal to you when you go and look at the scriptures because the scripture is the only thing that's going to stand. Mm -hmm. Book, chapter, and the verse. Amen, 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 and, amen. amen. And and I'm still a book person, right? Because I like to scratch and margin mm -hmm. and write thoughts and journal and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm an advocate for reading on the internet because I do that every day, you know. But gotcha. when you study, study something, yes, uh, uh, and I try to tell even the millennials, I know that's the new thing. That's mm -hmm. the great thing. But it's nothing like getting nope. a real in a real quiet place with Christ, mm -hmm. with his word, and really sitting down to see what he is saying to you. Yes, ma'am. And being able to reflect and meditate on it. That's it. There's nothing like it. Mm -hmm. And we'll find that they're more grounded in the word because even though they read it on the internet, mm -hmm. and I'm not knocking the internet. I need y'all to know I'm not knocking the internet. Don't come with me, no foolishness, all right? <laughs> the bottom line I'm simply saying is that when you have the book before you, you're able to write your thoughts yes. down. You're able to highlight it. Yes. Or on your pad, make your notes, however you do it. But the main thing is get it. Right. Is to get it. Yes. Pastor, we have a few minutes left. Um, there are some people out there who really don't know Jesus Christ. But before you do mm -hmm. that, you are you are pastor of Oak Hill Missionary Baptist Church. And where is your church located? 435 Orange Street, Houston, Texas, right next to the Ship Channel Bridge in the Clinton Drive. Actually, in the Glinda Park area. Okay, let them, let them get it. Slow it down. Oh, let them get that's it. That's that traffic okay. control to me. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. It's, <laughs> uh, it's 435 Owen Street, uh -huh. Houston, Texas, uh -huh. and it's right next in the Glinda Park area. You oh. take 16, you take the Clinton Drive exit, and you'll be close to us right there. All right, all right. And they can get the book where? By calling me. By call. <laughs> I'm, I told you, I eliminated everybody. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise be to God. And I thank you for my copy. No Amen. problem. Amen. There's somebody out there who really doesn't know Christ, yes. though. 
and somebody who may not even can afford your book, although mm -hmm. you have made it available in every way you know how mm -hmm. and in every language you know how mm -hmm. uh, you're able to at this time. And, and there's somebody who really is struggling with life. What would you tell them? What I would tell you is Isaiah 43, 25, the Word of God says, I, I am he that blight out all thy transgressions from my own self and will not remember your sins again. All he asks you to do is trust and believe that the gift that God gave you is free. Salvation is free. For the ones that are out there on drugs or whatever it is, if you put that drug away where that water is, if it jumps from over there, over here in your hands, do the wild thing. But if you got to get up and go get it, you're the problem. And I need you to understand, where you're at is a good place because God puts you in a place where he can save you. No situation that you're facing, my God cannot reach you where you're at. And we'll know that God has the capability because if he cleaned up UFO, he can definitely clean up you. Amen. And I got you to know that. Amen. 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 We want to thank you for joining Heart Matters with us again on this Monday. Praise be to God. You can see us every Monday evening. We are here to enlighten you in the word of God, to encourage you to live a life that is pleasing to God. Being saved is a heart matter. I want to tell you that. You must believe Jesus is who he says yes. he is. And then you must embrace who he is in your life. Amen. And then you must allow him to become Lord and Savior of your life. Heart matters mean that you're willing to submit to what he has called us to. I want to tell you it's easier than you think. It's not hard at all. Many mm -hmm. people get hung up on what I can't do. I want to tell you there is a liberty in doing what you can do in Christendom. The Bible yes. says he who the Son sets free is free indeed. Yes. And that indeed, Amen. indeed, 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 that there is liberty in Christ Jesus. Yes. Praise God. Many people are bound in their own four walls. You're bound in your own life. You're bound in your own mind. But oh, yes. I want to tell you that the God died. Yes. Jesus died. He gave his only, God gave his only begotten son. Amen. That you might be set free yes. from everything that bounds you. Egypt is not your home. There's That's a right. promised land for you. That's right. And God wants to take you there. Amen. Yes. God bless you. We love you here at MDL Ministries. I'm your host, Dr. Marshall. See you next Monday.